I feel the weight of his presence. I pray I can teach tonight. <laughs> oh my God. Holiness is a covenant. That's why when I travel, there's no pressure that, eh, maybe I'm going to commit adultery. It's a covenant. I live by a covenant. This body has been covenanted to God. And in this kingdom, our wives, Rishos, Rishos, we don't need extra. The way God did it in the beginning, a man and a wife, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Huh? The way he did it, we are satisfied. Because we understand that if we are going to work in partnership with a holy God, the requirement is that you too, must be what? Holy. Touch your neighbor, say be holy. Be holy. Next verse. Next verse, 17. So this is where we now began last week, Sunday. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, the implication of that relationship is that you will conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here. How? God is not partial. When you meet him, he's going to reward you. How? According to your works. He will reward you. So on the other side of eternity, that place is a place of rewards. We as believers who overcame, our rewards will be at the judgment seat of Christ. For those who decided to serve, serve Satan, their rewards will be determined at what the Bible calls the white throne judgment. So their reward for those who decided to refuse to be holy so that they can walk with a holy God, what will happen is that their reward is that the Bible says the place that God prepared for the devil and his angels, mm -hmm, that place was not prepared for man. Are you with me? It was prepared for who? The devil and his angels. That place will now become an abode for man because man refused the advances, the love advances of God. So those who rejected God in this life and felt that the requirement of holiness is too much. It's too much. You know, how can they be all these beautiful girls? Beautiful girls like this. Even, if I, even the pop population is in the favor of men. Women are more than men. Eh? How can God be so wicked? Huh? He now made the women plenty and the men small. It must mean that God has something in mind. How can there be all these pretty girls everywhere? And God is saying I should take only one. And even in taking one, he's, the pastor will now come and tell you that it is even possible. When the girls are already so many, God will not even tell you not to marry. What kind of wicked God is that? You will now find out that his commandments to you are his preservation for your soul. He wants you to be able to meet that requirement so that when you appear, you will be numbered in his family. A brother was reaching me and some people were reaching me throughout the week saying they really did not understand when I was saying, when I gave us two questions last week, because this is, is from here I began to talk about those two questions. That the reason many people cannot conduct themselves in fear in their mortal existence is because first, they don't know what the purposes of God are or what the purpose of God is, not are, is. So I said we should write down two questions. What's the first question? What is the purpose of God? What's the second question? What is the end of the Christian life? So let me expand so that those people will understand. So I said that the purpose of God is revealed in three dimensions. Originally, it was in creation. Secondarily, it was in redemption. And finally, it will be in what? Consummation. Go to the next verse. 18. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct 
received by tradition from where? Your father. Go back to the previous verse, verse 17. In verse 17, you see that he, Peter here identifies relationship. That the one we call father, he has the authority to be father because he is the one that created us. So in your salvation, your restoration to God is also a restoration to the submission of the will of your creator. So in God's original plan in creation, man was supposed to live with God, enjoy God, obey God, and manifest the glory of God. Man was basically to contact God and express him in the earth. That was man's major assignment. Live with God, obey him, honor him, and then be God's visible expression in the earth. So as long as Adam maintained relationship with his creator, his father, all of creation was also subject to him. As long as Adam maintained connection with his father, everything in creation remained in alignment. But when creation now had a problem because of Adam's rebellion, verse 18 now became necessary. Redemption now became God's plan. And what is God's plan in redemption? To redeem man and to restore man so that what was lost in Adam can be restored in Christ. So what God is actually doing, if you ask me in what one sentence, what is God doing? What is the purpose of God? God is building a family. Are you with me? Yes, he's building what? And what is the tool for this building that he's doing is redemption. Redemption is the first block of that building. Why? Because in Adam, man was sold to Satan. What, you've heard me say it many times. What Adam lost in the Garden of Eden was his what? His fatherhood. Satan became the spiritual father of man. And there, there's a metaphor that was used there. If you look at the curse, when God was releasing judgment upon them, when he was releasing judgment on the serpent, he said, you shall go on your belly all the days of your life. And what shall you feed on? Dust. Who came from dust? Man. Are you with me? So what Adam lost, when God said, in dying, you shall surely die, what he lost was that his relationship with his father was destroyed. That is why when you get born again, the spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are what? Son. His sonship that was restored in Christ. Are you with me? So redemption is the first block. And what is redemption? This one is refresher course now. Because what is redemption? Redemption is to buy back. Buy back. That's what redemption is. So the token for the purchase was the blood of Jesus. That's what Paul calls a propitiation. What did I call it? That is the token by which man's salvation was purchased. That token was the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Man was now purchased. And when I say man, I'm not talking about the male gender. I'm talking about all of humanity. Every human being on the face of the earth, the ones in Suriname, the ones in the Caribbean, the ones in Brazil, the ones in Togo, the ones anywhere in the world, every mortal man has been redeemed. Muslim, Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, every mortal man has been redeemed. When Jesus said on the cross of Calvary, it is finished, he wasn't talking about poverty. Mm. He was saying, I have completed the assignment for what? Redemption. Are you with me? Yes, it is finished. This is why Paul tells us that 
In that assignment, it is not only death that is important. That death is part of the journey, but if Christ had stayed dead in the grave, then Christianity would be meaningless. So that journey that Christ came to do, he had to die, but he also had to what? Indicative of the fact that you die and then you are resurrected as a new man. Also indicative of the fact that this life you are living now is not the end. You too are going to experience resurrection. Are you with me? So it says, if we are buried with Christ, we will also be what? Resurrected with him. Redemption. So when you get born again, your being born again is now what we call salvation. That is you now individually appropriating redemption to your life. Redemption is general. Salvation is what? So this is why when you want to get born again, there is a process. What is the process I showed you during this teaching? You believe with your heart. What do you believe? That that thing that Jesus did that is called redemption, that thing justified me. What does it mean to be justified? To be declared not guilty. I'm no longer guilty of Adam's sin. Just as by one man's sin, many became sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many would become what? Righteous. So when Adam sinned, the Bible says, all sinned. And when all sinned, all became candidates of the wrath of God. And when we speak about the wrath of God, we're not talking about a God who is angry. We are talking about a God who is willing to give you what you deserve. So sinners, the reason they are going to go to hell is because that is what they deserve. Not because God is wicked. Or because God wants to revenge. You say, eh, you don't serve me and you go so far. No. It's because that is what they deserve. Are you with me? So salvation personalizes the package of redemption. Now, when you get saved, that is not the end of the journey. Salvation now makes it possible for you to begin the real journey of becoming part of God's family. Remember what is God doing? He's building a family. Give me Romans chapter 8 and 29. Well, let's begin at 28. Romans chapter 8 and 28. And we know... That all things work together for good to those who what? Love God. To those who are called, are, are the called according to what? What is his purpose? He's building what? Next verse. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to what? The image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many who? Give us a simpler translation. Are you getting blessed? Simpler translation. Good. For God knew his people where? And he chose them to become like who? So that his son will be the firstborn among many what? What is God building? That's the purpose of God. A family. But for him to build that family, he has a template. Because the original template was corrupted. Remember, he blessed them and he said, be fruitful, multiply, do what? Fill the earth. Hmm? So they were supposed to what? Multiply. So Adam was supposed to give birth after his own kind. Are you with me? So when Adam rebelled, a virus was now installed in the software called man. That virus is called corruption on the basis of sin. And the dwelling place of that virus called sin is in the flesh. 
So everybody that is born of a man, what you transfer to your children is, in, is that virus. This is why, dear sister, when Jesus needed to be born, God could not allow Jesus to be born by the activity of mortal sexual intercourse. Are you here? Because if Jesus had been born as a result of the intercourse between Mary and Joseph, he would not have been born sinless. And if he was not born sinless, he could not have become the Lamb of God that take it away. That's what Moses was showing us in Leviticus. He said, when you want to come and atone for your sins, you must come with a lamb that has no what? Blemish. Sinless. Are you with me? So sin transfers. Transfer. That's why John told us that he was born not of human will. I mean, those of us that are, are born again, we are born not of human will, not by sexual intercourse, but by the will of God. Speaking about the salvation experience. Are you with me? So, he now puts a pattern, and that pattern is called Christ. Dear sister, when we want to make it into the new Jerusalem, you know what the angels are going to be checking? Whether we look like Jesus. Jesus. 